What's up, man? Is this the one that they keep what? comparing it's, me it's, to? It's a, no, it's a pleasure to meet you. They don't compare you to they me. They do. How am I the best if I don't beat the one they keep telling me about? Well, come on, Russell. You're not the best, and it ain't going to happen. I but, am the best. But, but, but you're good. They comparing me to you. You can't do that. Because True. I'm way better. I agree. Now, now, I'm way better. Now we're talking delusion. <laughs> I can't no. come back with that because I didn't play you. And you didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Every season of Survivor is a story. There are our main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else in hopes that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we're going to look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now, for reference, we're only going to be observing what the TV show is showing us and what stories being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And now with that, 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. Season 20, Heroes vs. Villains, was only filmed a few weeks after Russell was done with Season 19 Samoa, meaning he's back to play again in Survivor's first ever all-returning season since All-Stars. And keep in mind, he has not seen his last season air on TV yet, so he doesn't know that he lost to Natalie in a 7-2 landslide, which means he's likely to play this season in a similar fashion than before, which will be fun for us, but no doubt detrimental for him. But I wonder, did he learn not to say nasty things to people's faces because he saw the reaction that he got from Laura and Monica and a few others when he did it in Samoa, so maybe he won't do that this time. Maybe that's the one improvement he'll make. We shall see. So we start the season off by contrasting Survivor's most recent hero and villain. The heroes are definitely people I would rather play the game with. The villains are the people I've always been against. So this is perfect for me to be on the hero side and battle it out against these punks I don't like anyway. I'm a villain. I think villains are smarter than heroes because they don't mind stabbing somebody in the back to get where they want to get. It's a fact. It's a proven fact. Google it. Oh, I Googled it, and unfortunately, I couldn't find any studies to back up what Russell says there, though I love the line regardless. He says he is nervous being surrounded by top-tier players like Parvati and Boston Rob, but he will do his best to not be starstruck. After the chopper drops them all off, he plays up the aw shucks, I'm just happy to be here role, which is actually incredibly smart. This is a good fit. He should definitely do this for as long as he can. No one knows who he is. They haven't seen anything yet. He is basically coming in with a clean slate. We then hear from Boston Rob who says, hero or villain, it's just a matter of perspective, which is very much true in the show of Survivor. We then get an epic reward challenge, which has both tribes fighting to dig up bags and bring them back to their mats. Quite simple, but it involves a lot of physical contact. Russell faces off with Tom Westman and fights so dirty, and Jeff is like, dude, play fair. But the heroes ultimately win, and upon arriving at the villains camp, Russell says, I don't care that we lost, I am the best. I can't believe I'm doing this again. It's just starting to see in. I believe I'm gonna have to stay on my toes with these fellas. I'm ready for it, I'm ready for the challenge. I got way more to prove right here than I did last time. If I could do it here, if I can take it all the way, if I can whoop these all-stars, doesn't that mean I'm the best ever? I'm gonna play similar to the same game. I'm gonna use the mind game. They better give it their all and play the game because I'm taking this crap serious. That's why I'm here. I have to work my magic on, on the villain side, which is gonna be tough. These are all stars, but you know what? I'm a little above that. Like Michael Jordan is in, in basketball. Like Michael Phelps is in swimming. There's always somebody that's above their sport. And I'm the best player that ever played this game. Now, guess what? I get to prove it. 
I see that his ego has only increased since Samoa, and it reaffirms I don't think he really learned all that much since he lost the previous game. We then see back-to-back -back conversations he has with Daniel DiLorenzo, a final two deal specifically, and she says Russell is a great person to be aligned with, and then he does the exact same thing with Parvati, who says sure, he might be the devil, but he's the devil that she wants on her side. This feels a bit like he's trying to recreate the dumb girl alliance that he flipped on almost immediately, except Danielle is a second place finisher and Parvati has actually won this game, so they're not just some dumb blondes like he called them last time. In a brief scene for Russell, we see that Coach and Jerry are close romantically, and Russell says, go for it dude, pursue the love, which is a nice moment. Those are going to be few and far between, so cherish it while you can. But more importantly is that we are shown Boston Rob is the leader of this camp who works hard while everyone else is slacking off. He even starts fire without a flint, which causes Coach to just gush over him. You are the man, and it's like when you're talking, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm hanging, I'm literally hanging on every. I word. appreciate it. We made fire, and now Coach is going off with Boston Rob, like he's a hero or something. Rob, he thinks he's the boss of the camp. He thinks he's in control. But this is my mountain, and I'm still the king of the hill, unless I'm dethroned. Well, you know what? That ain't gonna happen. Russell's ego is too big, and on Heroes vs. Villains, there are a lot more egos to compete with than there were last time. The villains win immunity thanks to Boston Rob and Sandra, and in a blink and you miss it moment back at camp, Russell's doing like the seesaw thing with Coach, just take a look at it. It's quite cute and funny, but Russell then says, I am glad the heroes lost and now they have to act like, well, villains. So yeah, that's the premiere. And if Russell isn't a main character based on what we've seen so far, uh, I'm just guessing he goes really early and they're just trying to take advantage of what they have of him right now. By the way, do you like the content I make? Well, if you want to pick what I cover for videos and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. You can cancel at any time and there is a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. Episode 2 is quiet for Russell and that might be the only time I ever say that about this man in this video. But yeah, we see Boston Rob is a hard worker, he passes out, Russell says he feels for the guy, and they win immunity because of Boston Rob. Okay, cool. So we move on to episode 3, and Russell is center stage again. Good. I was getting worried he wouldn't get his 100 confessionals. We see him and Parvati cuddling and laughing, and this lasts for an uncomfortable amount of time on screen. Keep in mind, Russell Hans is married, so no one really flirted back with him on Samoa despite his attempt in a secret scene with Natalie and Ashley in episode 1 of that season, but here Parvati just goes for it, she doesn't care. Boston Rob says it's dumb puppy love and he doesn't trust Russell at all. The next day we see Coach and Boston Rob warn Russell about this alliance with Parvati, giving him the benefit of the doubt since it puts a target on his back and he's the new guy, but Russell gets offended. Russell um, is walking on very thin ice. Parvati, in my opinion, is the most dangerous player on our tribe. I've seen this go down before. You gotta be careful. You know, the way you're hanging out with her and everything. And yeah, I mean, no. she might she might not be the strongest, and she got a lot of friends on the other right. side. You're totally right, and you, it's like, it's ostracizing you. Right. And you gotta be cool on that, man. Yeah. Everybody knows Coach is a big joke. So he could go around flapping his jaws all he wants. The thing with Rob, he thinks he's the boss of the camp. Like, that's my daddy. Well, I'm the daddy around here. But I gotta listen to this, this fool. Like he's in control. But that's what I have to do to get to the top. That's what I'm gonna have to do until he's gone. He don't know who he's messing with. Nobody knows who they're messing with around here. It's Russell Hans. Give me a break. I would say Russell needs to chill out, take a step back, take a breather, but we know he's not gonna do that. He then tells Parv everything that was said to him and she says, despite this dude being a straight up lunatic, she trusts him. But do you remember in Samoa when he released the chickens just to cause chaos and nothing happened? Or when he burned Jason's socks to cause chaos and nothing really happened besides Jason being a little annoyed? Or when he dumped everyone's water canteens, which was a minor inconvenience? Well, Rob thinks he's running the show and Coach thinks he's running the show but I'm gonna take control of that. They wanna play rough, I can play rough. King Rustall can get rid of the machete. <laughs> this is gonna be wonderful because it's not just gonna be the machete. Oh, Boston Rob likes that hat, don't he? I think he will go nuts with how this little bee hat. 
I don't even like the Boston Red Sox. It's the Houston Astros, baby. I love his little baseball rant in the middle. That's why I left it in the video best part of an otherwise really dumb scene for him. But this will be said many, many times in this video, so get ready to repeat it with me. But why? Why do this? Did it really work in Samoa? How is this teaching anyone any lessons? Russell is going crazy and we're only in episode three. We then see the villains get completely annihilated in the immunity challenge and at tribal council, he plays up his aw shucks role by saying, he really loves how everyone around him is actually playing the game, unlike in Samoa. That shtick may be working now, and I think that's why Boston Rob and Coach were giving him the benefit of the doubt with Parv, but it won't last too much longer. Anyways, the villains vote off Randy 9-1. to one. Randy, the tribe has spoken. Episode 4 sees the villains win reward, in part thanks to Russell, and back at camp, Russell finds a clue to the idol in the reward supplies. Unfortunately though, Everyone sees this, it gets right out loud, and multiple people exclaim that if you go and look for the idol, we will vote you off next. Now that's what they said, what Russell heard was go look for the idol, and that's what he plans on doing. He has the idol on his brilliant brain and he wants it now. Rob says we're finding a hidden immunity idol all together and we'll get rid of it, but they're too dumb to walk even down the beach. This is a bunch of idiots out here. Man, if I could find that hidden immunity idol. I will become powerful in this game. Sandra, we'll find out what Russell's doing. <laughs> Why don't they matter? And we look if he's on the beach, because if he is, he's... He's a stupid animal. Russell feels his own face. I mean, it sucks, but that's what we said, right? He's okay. gone. I don't care yeah. if he has it or not. Russell's a bonehead. He's like the Hobbit on crack. And you know what? I don't trust Russell's ass at all. And the safest thing to do with someone like that is to just get rid of him right away. All of that and he didn't even find it. What happened to the Idol King? Remember how he found two idols without anyone telling him any clues last season? Yeah, I thought he was Michael Jordan. Idol or not, he is now the target. So the villains win immunity thanks to Boston Rob and episode five starts with everyone bonding, doing some coach chi, except one person. And I think we all knew who that one person is, avoiding the social bonding. Everybody this morning walks out on the beach starting to doing a little coachy in a circle. You know, all that meditating crap. While they meditating, getting ready for the challenge, I guess that's what they were meditating for. I'm looking for the hidden immunity idol. Been digging on this thing for two days straight. It was right in my face. That's what I was afraid of. Rob's not in control of this game right now. This is my key. This is my key right here. And I hear it goes again. Unlike in Samoa when he found three idols, there is no exciting or triumphant music here. And the visuals of him completely ignoring everyone bonding while he looks for the idol is very telling of his gameplay in both of his seasons so far. But in reality, friends are more powerful than an idol can ever be, and I don't think he knows that. So at the reward challenge, we see the return of Schmergenball from Samoa, and oh no, that's a bad idea because multiple people got hurt last season doing that. One person even got medically evacuated. So when James injures his leg this season, it yeah, it makes sense. Not bad enough to be medically evacuated, but bad enough to be all wrapped up in limping. The villains win reward, and with that comes a massive chocolate feast that gets everyone sick. And then Russell says, hey, Parvi, I have the idol. Look, things are changing because I have the idol. Russell having the idol puts me in a better position in the game. Gives me a little stronger footing because right now everyone's still trying to vote me out. They all think I'm the biggest threat. For some reason, I'm like some evil mastermind who's going to screw all of them over. So they all want to vote me out now. So Russell having the idol is definitely like a good, he's a great ally for me. Just grab on my coattails, bro. I don't ride coattails, baby. I don't. You'll ride these. And you're gonna be okay. I have the idol. And now we have the idol. I don't have any problem to give it to you to get further in the game with the votes. I feel like I need to do something monumental like the Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> that would go like this and you put the... Can I do this? No, you do it. You would like knight me just like that. Coach bows down to me. He was the one kneeling to me and I knight him. As the king that I am, I knight the dragon slayer. Then we'll weed out Lil Rob's group. Man, it's, it's personal with me and Rob. I don't think he knows who he's dealing with. He thinks he's tough. All right, may the best man win. Let's do this. 
a bit risky telling coach, but Russell wants to pull people away from Boston Rob and it seemingly works. Though coach is also an emotional player like Russell and can flip on a dime depending on how he feels. The villains win immunity thanks to Boston Rob again for like what the third or fourth time now and in episode six the rivalry Russell has with Rob that has been one-sided so far finally comes to a head. I don't want to be at your throat. I don't want you to be at my throat. I've decided to have a conversation with Rob to make him think that I'm not after him, which I am. A lot of people are mad though that you went looking for that idol. I went looking for it, but if I get the next clue, I'll find it. I'm not a rat and I'm not going to say who it was, but a lot of people are mad that you went looking for that idol. They want your ass off. He's not playing with the amateurs anymore. He's playing with the big boys now. Better to play with me than against me. Boston Rob tells me it's better to play with me than against me. Oh, really? I believe I'm gonna get him to eat them words. So far, this battle has been very one-sided with Russell being jealous and Boston Rob just being himself not knowing about this, but that aw shucks Russell role was playing is now gone completely. The fight is on. Who will win? After a war challenge, Chef says both tribes are going to tribal no matter what. You all are competing for individual immunity, which Boston Rob wins. And back to camp, Rob says Parvati is the target and we need Russell to think it is him, so he wastes his idol. But in a bad move for Boston Rob and a great read by Russell, Boston Rob says, buddy, if you don't have the idol tonight, you're gone. And Russell goes, whoa, that means they're targeting Parvati, which is, that's, that's correct, he's dead on. So he says, let's target Tyson, Rob's buddy, and he won't see it coming. But knowing he is down six to three and all the other side has to do is split the votes, he makes a risky move. I'm gonna do it. It's breaking my heart, so I'm gonna vote for poverty. Yeah, you need to. And then that be it. Yeah. She'll go home. I started thinking, you know, I gotta play this game for myself. Okay. When Russell came and told me that he wanted to vote out poverty, I thought it was actually an excellent opportunity to maybe flop my vote to poverty. I mean. I want her out. I just want to get it over with and get some hot dog in my mouth. Is Tyson really going to fall for that? As Boston Rob told him, splitting the votes is foolproof and he's right. Are Russell's mind games really going to work? I think I'm gonna take the target off of my back. No, not this way. Poverty? Are you serious? Thank you. This is indeed hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for poverty will not count. First vote, Russell. Russell, two votes, Russell. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Tyson. Tyson, six person voted out of Survivor, Heroes versus Villains. Tyson. Tyson, chop spoken. Wow. That was so dumb on Tyson's part. Russell got massively lucky that even worked. Good for him though. It shouldn't have worked, but it did. I mean, that's a lot of luck involved in that one. And Boston Rob is baffled why anyone flipped their vote. But while Boston Rob ponders, Courtney makes fun. It's no secret that Russell has a little boy crush on Parvati because he's, I mean, let's face it, he's like a bandy-legged little troll who, who, you know, sort of like scampers around with his tooth missing and, you know, is in and out of the bushes and never washes and she pays attention to him and she has like no problem flirting with clearly anything that walks. That was too funny to not include in a matter of only six episodes with a clean slate entering the season. Russell is in a bad spot socially, not something you could say six episodes into Samoa. Him, Parv, and Danielle have gone full villain as they laugh about what happened last night outside of the tent that everyone sleeps in, and everyone's like, what the heck are they laughing about? They're still down five to three. And then Russell makes a bold move of convincing Jerry to ditch Boston Rob, who they say he would never save you, Jerry. Come flip with us will save you and they're more right than they even know i mean boss rob is literally the reason jerry went out in all stars so jerry says yes i will flip we then see russell talk to jerry and coach and i bet you won't guess what offer he makes to them both he brings it back from samoa it's the good old-fashioned final three he's just offering this up again to people he's not really planning on going to the end with the same trick he used all the time in samoa that bit him in the butt coach doesn't believe him but jerry does right now coach is emotionally being pulled 
towards Boston Rob, but also towards Russell. It's funny. They do lose immunity due to Boston Rob and Sandra. And back at camp, Rob talks to Russell and says, who should we vote off next? I think we need to weed off the week. What do you suggest? One of these. One of who? Right here. You That's not a way to gather friends, I don't think. How do you two feel about that? I don't like it. Oh no, I think I think he's right. What kind of logic is that, Russell? That's a new one. All Rob wants is to keep his alliance strong, which I understand. Because he knows once Courtney leaves, he's at my mercy. I'm, a, I'm after him. He's after me. May the best man win. Whoever's better in the game, that's which one's going to be here longer. And it's going to be me. And he sees it coming. Say with me, but why? Why does he do this? As we learned in Russell's last video, he doesn't care about the jury. He only cares about reaching final three, and he thinks that if he gets there, the jury will automatically vote for him, as if the other two people who got to final three are not worthy. I don't get it either, and so many moments of his are going to be labeled dumb because he literally does not care about whether people like him at the end of the game, aka half of the point of Survivor. He then tells Coach and Danielle that Boston Rob is going tonight, and they don't need him for challenges. That's a bull-faced lie. Boston Rob is the reason for every single immunity win they've had so far. So, at Tribal Council, they all go to vote, and... It's game over. It's either you or me. First vote. Rob. Rob. Two votes, Rob. Russell. Russell. We're tied. Rob. Tied again. Courtney. Eighth person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Rob. You're a little man. Rob, the tribe has spoken. Well, Boston Rob is gone, so what's next for Russell's story? Well, he is a guy that always needs a target or he self-destructs, so I'm sure he'll find someone. Episode 8 has him making fun of Boston Rob, which I will admit is pretty funny, and Coach gets upset and says Russell is a bully. He says Boston Rob should have never been voted off. How do I say this? Um, Coach is delusional. Coach threw a vote on Courtney and allowed Boston Rob to go. Coach stopped a tie from happening that could have saved Boston Rob. He purposely did that and now he is being a whiny little baby because Boston Rob called him a little man and he took that personally. They then get a clue that makes it sound like the merge is coming up. So at the challenge. So Rupert, shocked that Boston Rob is gone? It sure looks like they got a woman's alliance. Everybody drop your <laughs> expectations. We are not merging. When I found out that the hero tribe thinks this is an all-girl alliance, I thought they're making a huge mistake because there's no girl alliance over here. Rob got voted out last night because of me. I'm like, help. <laughs> that is wild that the heroes think the villains are being run by the women, but if I take a step back and look at it from their perspective, it kind of makes sense. The fear of poverty doing a Black Widow's Alliance 2.0 is palpable. And yeah, three men have been voted off so far, with Boss and Rob being the biggest name of them all. From the outside looking in, I mean, it makes sense, but they just don't have all the context. The villains lose reward and back at camp, there's a whole lot of fighting over nothing. The lack of Boss and Rob is really being felt at their camp, basically. Sandra then tells Russell that Coach is conspiring to get him out. And is this true? No, not at all. Does Russell believe it's true, though? Yes, without question. The villains lose immunity, and Russell tells Coach that Courtney needs to go, which is not his true intentions at all, he's just lying to Coach. But then Danielle talks to him, and... All right, so this is the deal. We need to keep him right now. Look what we're doing with Coach. We're getting dominated. Because of Courtney and Sandra. That's a stupid move. And I don't Paul. know how you're thinking right now. I don't know how you're playing the game. We keep coaching, we lose the next one. You'll make sure your butt's on the line for that. You you would put your butt on the line. I'm just saying we'll we have a better coach. shot. I'm not. You are freaking you out that, right now. Chill out. out. You ain't making any sense. Yes, I am. It's stupid to let him go. I, I don't think I it's I just told you I don't agree with it. You're not listening to me. I ain't going to talk to you no more. I'm giving you suggestions. Just calm I'm down. looking at it in different ways. You're just Dang. like. I don't want to talk to you. I threw that out there and Russell freaked out and screamed at me because he's just so in control of this game and everything has to go the way he wants it to go. Wow, they are really stressed. A lack of food, a lack of good sleep, and high emotions can definitely do that to you. Either way, 
it's a bad look for Russell. But then a few minutes later, when he calms down, he says, Danielle, actually, I agree with you. Courtney should go. Russell is so easily swayed. So at Tribal Council, they all go to vote and... Courtney. 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 Three votes, Courtney. Coach. 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 Ninth person voted out of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains and the first member of our jury. Coach. Coach. Travis Bogan. Coach is the first member of the jury, so let's start tracking how these jury members feel about Russell on their way out the door, shall we? Because Coach doesn't like him and actually badmouths him on Ponderosa constantly. At the episode nine reward challenge, both Rupert and JT say, wow, the women are definitely running things. And this is just perfect as JT mouths to hang in there to Russell. And he just plays along and says his Russell seeds are working. This is hilarious. I mean, it makes sense, as I said, from the outside looking in, but this is hilarious knowing what we know. Back at camp, Jerry says she loves how her alliance with Russell is going and he's awesome. Glad to see someone likes him. Now, Russell doesn't witness this next moment, but Parvati finds an idol clue and then the idol. And Russell has no idea because she's keeping it a secret from him. The villains lose immunity and that's actually not even the biggest deal. What you're about to see happens during the challenge and then right after. Okay, the challenge is over. You go to JT. Okay, he's gonna give you something. Why did you get for the office? Use it tonight. Protect yourself. Get rid of one of them. Come on board with us. Okay? Okay. Good. Get rid of her ass. Wish I could take you home. I don't even have to find idols. People are actually giving me idols. You don't hand the enemy the idol, especially when his name is Russell Hands. You don't do that. That's a no-no. Play the idol tonight. For sure. To save yourself. Save myself. Because clearly, you're on the outside of an all-devouring female alliance. Right. I put that part in myself. I can't believe he's writing all this. Like he's telling me what to do. He's, he's giving me pointers. How do you give the Idol King an idol? Here, Mr. Russell, here's an idol. This one's just for you. Well, thank you. You know what? I think JT just handed me $1 million. Hey, I guess he can afford it. Hopefully, I can trust you and you're not truly a villain. <laughs> yes, I am. Let's do this <laughs> together. See you soon. BFF forever. <laughs> XOXO, JT. Destroy this right when you finish reading. <laughs> JT gave Russell his heart today. And Russell is just gonna stab it a million times, <laughs> a million times over, and hand it to me. And I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> Are you as blown away as I am? I thought maybe the heroes would work with him come the merge, but I didn't think any of them would just gift him a free idol before the merge. This is what happens when they don't know anything about him and just assume things. It's a risky move on their part, and they're wrong. Russell then says Courtney is the next target since she is likely to flip come the merge. And uh, yeah, then he shows Danielle and Jerry the idol, solidifying trust with them. So we go to tribal council and Courtney is voted off easily. Courtney, tribe has spoken. <laughs> Look, bitches. See you later. As I said before, since we're tracking jurors, Courtney is the one that made fun of Russell for being a bandy-legged troll, so yeah, I don't think she likes him either. Episode 10 brings with it a note saying it's time for the merge. Finally. The heroes and villains are even up five to five going into this thing, so this next vote is going to be huge. Right away, JT and Rupert talk to Russell and they're like, how the heck are both you and Parvati existing at the same time in this game? Did we not give you an idol to get rid of her? You know, it's the first time I've been comfortable since day four. I'm myself. This is where I stand. This is it for me. So don't even have I don't any doubt. doubt. I don't doubt Don't you. have any, don't even worry. Where am I kidding that I am on board with y'all? Giving Russ the hidden mini out of could blow up in my face. I mean, he could have never been going home. You know, he could be the leader of the girls over there. Do I believe it? Not a chance in the world. So, I mean, I trust him explicitly. Hook, line, and sinker. They're biting everything I tell them. This is going to be way easier than I thought. I mean, Russell has them hook, line, and sinker. It's impressive. I'll give him credit, but. 
It's almost like JT's blinded by what he wants to believe versus what the truth is. Russell's taking full advantage of this gift of stupidity. We then see Danielle win immunity and Amanda talks to Parvati and says, hey, play your idol tonight if you have one. Parvati goes, hmm, interesting. Russell, not knowing Parvati has an idol, gives her the JT idol. And at tribal council, Parvati makes a bold, bold move. You know what, Jeff? Sandra, not for you. Get out of here, for real. Jerry, that one's for you too. Damn it. Thanks, Jerry. Sandra, these are both hidden immunity idols. Any votes cast for Sandra or Jerry will not count. Jerry does 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 not count. JT. JT, that's two votes, JT. 11th person voted out and the third member of our jury. JT. JT, Travis spoken. I feel like a total idiot right now. This is probably one of the biggest moves in Survivor history and it did not go in my favor. JT actually respected Russell on the way out. Nice. But that was a brilliant play by Parvati. Brilliant job by her. I do want to point out though that back at Tribal when she did this, uh. Who is Rupert mad at? Russell. Back at camp, Russell is living with Parvati and for good reason, he has been completely open and honest with her. So why is she keeping secrets from him? He isn't used to being taken advantage of. He's usually the one taking advantage of others. The next morning, Candace becomes the Judas of the Heroes Tribe and talks to Russell. When it comes down to the top six, things have to happen. And right now the ship is sinking, you know that. Yeah, I know. And somebody, one person has to jump, and that one person is going to be very crucial to what happens later on in the game. If you're the last one standing, you won't be the last one. You won't go with number six. I can guarantee that. I don't want to sit here and say you're going to go to the top three, but it's a strong possibility. Well, just uh, let me know. Okay, I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Say it with me, but why? Why did he even propose a possible final three? He is such an emotional player. It's really just because it feels good in the moment to say it for him. But on the flip side, this is great. But not the final three part, the other part where Candace is flipping. A hero flipping is just what they needed. We then see Danielle, Amanda, and Colby go on reward. Danielle gets the idol clue, <laughs> that's the whole thing. And back at camp, she shares it with Russell, who then goes out and searches for it. Danielle's looking at one side, I'm looking at the other side. I pick up a rock, after being there five seconds, there it is. I wanted to break away from her immediately because they hid, they hid the immunity idol from me. They didn't let me know about it. You know what? I'm not letting them know about it. I am the king of hidden immunity idols. Again, no exciting or triumphant music whatsoever. Analyzing and watching the season back to back with Samoa is fascinating because the storytelling was enamored with Russell's successes his first go around, but this time the story seems to be very much intrigued by his failures and plays down anything he does well. We then see him learning almost nothing from Samoa when he tells Candace about his idol to solidify her flipping and despite how risky it is, it, it works. However, he then promises her final three. He doesn't propose a possible final three, he promises final three this time. Say it with me, but why? He then talks to Sandra and says, you better not flip because we now have a hero on our side. Brilliant, because Sandra was going to flip actually, but she won't do it if they don't have the numbers. This, this was actually a good move. However, on the flip side, she now flat out hates Russell and constantly badmouths him to the heroes and spills everything that happened pre-merge. Russell hears about her doing this from Candace and confronts Sandra by threatening to play his idol and intimidates her. Or at least he tries to intimidate her because he clearly has not watched Pearl Islands because you really can't intimidate and bully Sandra. It has the opposite effect. She loves to fight back. We then go to tribal council where Russell says many things in front of the jury that he really should just not say out loud to anyone but himself. Some of the heroes have talked to me and I know that they sense that I'm on the outside because even I know that I'm on the outside within my own group. So Amanda, how do you make it appealing to somebody like Sandra who would say, I'm already fifth with the group I got here with from the beginning? Well, you offer them a better deal. She might have the best deal. She's weak in challenges. She's easy to beat for the vote. Sounds like somebody I want to take with me to the jury. But there's so many times when I feel thing. like I'm not wanted, you know what I'm saying? So I have like a sense of frustration within my own alliance. 
First of all, the whole team, we play completely different. Sandra, she's just there with us. That's a big statement. See, I'm just there. Say it with me, but why? Why say that? He's trying to bully Sandra and it isn't going to work. We then see the hero say that Danielle definitely has the idol, so it's good that Candace hasn't spilled the beans on that secret. And when Russell goes to vote, we see Courtney acting like she's going to puke. So, who's voted off? Hope I'm doing the right thing and playing it for myself this time. First vote, Amanda. Parvati. Amanda, two votes Amanda. Parvati, we're tied. Two votes Amanda, two votes Parvati. Parvati. Amanda. Amanda, that's four votes Amanda. 12th person voted out and the fourth member of our jury. Amanda. Amanda, the tribe has spoken. What a needless idol play. And on the note of Amanda as a juror, we never saw her and Russell talk once, so I guess they don't have any sort of relationship that's important to the story. But on a separate note about Russell's bullying, he was a lot more fun as the underdog in Samoa. What we're seeing here is basically how he treated Mick and Natalie at the end of Samoa when he was on top and he knew it. And that's when he openly bullied them. And they were his teammates. We then see Rupert and Colby rightfully mad that Candace flipped on them. And then this scene takes place between Rupert and Russell. I think Russell is a deceitful person. And anything he says is a lie. He could be worse than Johnny Fairplay. He is. You've already proven yourself to be a disgusting, terrible human being to swear on your kid's life. I've played the game twice. People see I'm not that liar. Do you think I care about how it'll you oh, as a man? I think you don't give a damn about anything but yourself. I don't give a f about you or uh, your I know. I don't think you give a damn fam. about anybody but yourself. The great, powerful Rupert. The good guy. You know, the you second say, coming of Christ. You Rupert. can say whatever you want. You're such a dumbass, Rupert. Again, he does this in front of everyone. Sure, the people who have already been voted off are not here, but most of the people here are gonna be on the jury. They're gonna relay this information. It's so incredibly dumb. Parvati wins individual immunity and Jeff openly reads an idol clue in front of everyone. Interesting. So back at camp, everyone is scrambling to find the idol. And while they're searching, Rupert goes, screw it. I'm just gonna put a rock in my pocket and pretend that I found it. And while that sounds so simple on paper, it's because it is, and it works. And Russell believes him. Going into tribal, the plan is to split the votes three to three to flush out Rupert's idol, three votes on Candace, three votes on Rupert. And if he doesn't play the idol, then he goes. And if he does play the idol, then Candace goes. So when they all vote. Rupert. Candace. One vote, Candace. Rupert. That's two votes, Rupert. Candace. Rupert. That's three votes, Rupert. Candace. That's four votes, Candace. 13th person voted out and the fifth member of our jury. Candace. Candace, the tribe has spoken. Time for the go. In terms of Candace as a juror, Russell promised her final three. And then the very next day, after she flips to help him, he votes her off. They did not anticipate the heroes throwing their votes on Candace. So Rupert lives to see another day because he doesn't have an idol. Back at camp, he blames everyone else but himself for Candace leaving over Rupert, but uh, he voted Candace. He was complicit. Jerry says if you wanted to do something else, then you should have said something right, instead of just complaining about it right now. He then wins immunity, not that he needs it, and back at camp, he is so, so very emotional as he decides he has had enough of Danielle and Parvati being close. He wants Danielle gone. He is jealous. Say it with me, but why? Isn't she part of his real final three? Does he even know who his real final three is? I am baffled. He then tells Danielle he wants to vote off Parvati and she doesn't agree or disagree with what he's saying. And uh, what he's about to do is pretty wild as he then tells Parv that Danielle proposed to vote her off. Danielle came to me. She wants to vote you off when it comes down to five or six. Why would you want to do that? Well, I want to talk to her. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. You can't just come at me and tell me that my final three from day one wants me oh, out. And you think I'm not going to talk to her? Party, if you do that, you're out this game. I promise you. Are you serious? You're going to go tell her exactly what I'm trying to keep a secret from her? I just told her? you I'm not going to say what you're you saying. You can't even bring it up. Today should have been Rupert Dunn. Russell comes out of nowhere and says, they're blindsiding you. That's what's happening. I'm like, I'm not voting Danielle tonight. I don't care what you say. I'm not doing it. And you're trying to blindside me. Now he's trying to vote she you. She wanted to blindside you. He said that to you? Yes. He's such a liar. He's got this whole thing. Like, he wants me and you 
to be like I think person. he's worried that if it's the final three and if it's you, me, and him, he's gonna you and I will take each other and he'll, he'll be out. As soon as we get rid of Danielle, poverty. He's gonna be so scared of me and she's gonna stick to me like glue. And she's gonna vote the way I tell her to vote. So say it with me, but why? That's the theme of this story. But why? Russell is so emotional. He just does whatever he feels like when he feels like it. That's why. He then recruits Colby and Rupert to vote off Danielle, who are both more than happy to do so. And he threatens Jerry and says, if you don't vote off Danielle, then you're next. And she's like, what? You can't just threaten me. He's like, no, it's not me. It's not me. It's Danielle. If you don't vote off Danielle, she's going to vote you off next. He doesn't explain anything. So at Tribal Council, he fights with Danielle for some reason. Russell's trying to test loyalty. That's what I got. So Russell, you got caught. No, I didn't get caught doing nothing. Today, Danielle came up to me before I said anything and said, when do you when Lied. do you want to get Liar. rid of? Let me, let me finish talking. Danielle knows where my loyalty lies and that's with poverty. If you're going to come and up me, to me, if you're going to come up to me and try to get rid of For poverty, the last... then I'm going to you, try to get rid of you. You just sat me on the beach and said that you don't want to go I, against poverty I, at the I end. I wanted to you see think... where you stood, and oh, I exactly really? found out. <laughs> Can we... We've been in alliance since the beginning. I don't know why he's trying to m mess with it. I, I don't understand how she's just putting it all on me while I'm trying to mess with it when she agreed totally with that. Because you were telling and when me she, that she wanted when to she get me said, off. When she said, let's what get rid of when she... <laughs> Can I finish, please? No. And whatever. You're such a liar. It wouldn't have happened. It didn't. It would have happened if no, I would have wanted it to It would not happen. have happened. I'm closer to the poverty than you think. Oh, really? Say it with me, but why? Why gaslight and attack someone who you've been loyal with the whole game? And now they're going to the jury and the whole jury's witnessing this. Why? Everyone sees the bullying. It's right there. The jury will believe Daniel over Russell, in my opinion, any day of the week. So they all go to vote and... You're closer than poverty than I think. It makes me think that y'all got something going on. So I'm gonna have to cut that tie. First vote. Rupert, Danielle, Rupert, two votes Rupert, Danielle, Rupert, three votes Rupert, Danielle, we're tied, 14th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury, Danielle, Danielle, Travis vote. Russell is insane, like I've never seen anyone so psychotic, I mean you feel like you're in prison when you're around him because he's especially when you're aligned with him because he doesn't keep it. He stares at you all day long. He watches every single person, who they talk to, and then after they talk to them, he goes up to them and asks them what they talked about. And then he goes up to you and asks to which, what you talked about to make sure the stories match up. I mean, he does this nonstop. He doesn't do any work around camp. He just sits there and stares at people to make sure that they're not trying to you know, get him off or anyone in his alliance. And then, and now he's testing the people in his alliance. That might bite him in the ass at the end because I don't know how many people are gonna vote for him. Uh, yeah, I would say Daniel obviously hates Russell. It was just that fast. In a matter of a day, everything just flipped on Ted. As of now, he has maybe one vote with JT. Maybe. Parvati says straight up, I can't trust Russell now. He's the biggest villain this game has ever seen, and that's fair. I want to echo what Rupert said earlier too. Even fair play was more trustworthy and would stick to an alliance better than Russell does. Russell then tells us that he needed to do that, or he was gone, which absolutely nothing on the show has indicated this at all, and in fact, he had immunity around his neck, so I don't know what he's talking about. Does he not know it's a final three at the end? Parvati and Danielle were gonna take him there. If anything, he's being dragged as a goat by Parvati. Anyways, it is now time for the family visit, which feels so counter to everything we've been experiencing so far. It's a sweet moment in the midst of just chaos. And that's when his wife comes out and hugs him, which is nice. And then he loses reward to Jerry, and then she picks Sandra and Parvati to go on reward with her which Russell doesn't like at all. And when his wife says, oh, it was so nice to see you, honey, he completely ignores her and is laser focused on getting revenge with Jerry. So back at camp with Colby and Rupert. When Jerry got to announce who she's gonna bring, I was fully expecting her to bring me. Why wouldn't she? I've been taking care of Jerry this entire time. She's not gonna take me. I hope that burger literally tastes like a million dollars because that was a million dollar decision. Oh. These girls are a bunch of unappreciative little bitches. Both of them. I want to trust you all the way to the final three. 
Um, Russell, final three. Final three. Colby, final three. I got to think about winning this game. And poverty is a huge threat for the million dollars. She's the only one that could give me a shot for it in my mind. So now, if poverty doesn't win immunity, she's going home. All right, let's do this. Say it with me. But why? Why do this? Why make this final three deal? He has no intention of keeping it. He would be dumb to go to the end of those two. They will beat him. But Russell is an extremely emotional player, and hey, it felt good in the moment. He then tells the heroes they are voting off Parvati next, and when he gets a chance to talk to Jerry, she does an incredible job of cooling him down and says, we're good to final three, no worries. Again, with the final three promises, Russell's the one promising it, Jerry didn't even bring it up, but Parvati wins her second immunity. So who is Russell going to betray now? Rupert, fun. But then he learns that Sandra's targeting him, so when he goes and talks to her... Are you with me or are you against me? I'm against you, Russell. Because yeah. I've never been against her. But are you with me or are you against me? If you hit me, you're going to go next. You ain't going nowhere. I know I ain't going nowhere. Oh. I know that. I know oh, so I'm you're telling me I'm going somewhere? No, I'm safe. Oh. I know I'm safe. I'm comfortable. You're the one in the truck. <laughs> Who invited Boston Rob back to the party? Are you with me or are you against me? <laughs> uh, what are y'all doing? Y'all being stupid? I mean, y'all own something? Y'all drinking over there? Because you're being dumb. He is severely underestimating Sandra. I mean, remember, Sandra won her first season and uh, she came one vote shy of a perfect game. She's no scrub. This is just like how he underestimated Natalie only a month prior in his life. No lessons have been learned at all. So at Tribal Council, Sandra plays an idol she found that Russell didn't know about, and Rupert is voted off. Rupert, the tribe is spoken. Finale time, but quickly I must mention that Russell outright disrespected and fought with Rupert and then betrayed the final three deal with him, so yeah, I don't think Rupert's gonna vote for him. The finale opens with Jeff saying that just like in season 19, Russell has burned bridges, bullied, and made endless deals with anyone he could. Ain't that the truth, Jeff. Ain't that the truth. Back at camp, Russell is mad that Sandra didn't tell him about her idol, and she's like, you don't tell me about any of your idols. Why do I have to tell you about my idols? That's so true, Sandra. Very true. Russell has this insane thing about him where he feels like he needs to be in control all of the time of everybody. He then accuses Parvati of knowing about Sandra's idol and flat out attacks her, and Parvati didn't know anything. But that doesn't matter. He's just going about this the wrong way, even if she did. And as she says, he's acting like a toddler. He then says he wants to sit next to Sandra and Jerry at the end because he's guaranteed to win. I mean, he's wrong, but whatever. Parvati then wins her third immunity, and Colby talks to Russell and says, hey, uh, if Parvati's at the end, she's going to get more votes than you, straight up. And Russell ignores this. I mean, he doesn't believe him, despite the fact that Colby's going to be a juror. And I think Colby's pretty in tune with what the heroes are thinking. So at Tribal Council, Colby is voted off. Colby, tribe has spoken. Colby and Russell really didn't have a relationship beyond the broken Final 3 deal. Back at camp, Russell tells Jerry that if anyone but Parvati wins Final Immunity, then Parvati is gone. Perfect, he actually listened to Colby. Hmm. We then see him win final immunity by seconds over Jerry and Parvati. Back at camp, he talks to Sandra. You know why everybody wants to take you to the end? Because I already won and they'll win against me. Yeah. But I don't care, I'll take the $100,000 because I knew I wasn't gonna win again. And no matter what, in any circumstances, I'm keeping Sandra. I think she might get Courtney's vote and that's it. So I'm gonna use Sandra for me to win a million dollars. She can't beat me. I want you to find three because I think I can meet you for the million. All right. Straight up. I'll take the hundred thousand. You know how I feel. Russell won immunity. So essentially, I have to do whatever uh, Russell says because he's wearing the idol. I'm feeling wonderful because regardless, Russell's keeping me around because I'll never get a single vote. But I don't know about that. This was the only time, all game, it was okay to say, hey, I am not voting you off because I want to bring you to the end because I think I could beat you. This was the perfect context. They're in private, they're alone. I mean, he didn't really have to tell her, but if he had to, yeah, this was fine. It wasn't really threatening either. Not that it matters anymore as he then talks to Parvati where she says, Sandra is the bigger threat than Jerry. Sandra can beat us both. And Russell takes this and interprets it as, oh, Parvati can't beat Sandra. And I know I can beat Sandra, therefore I can beat Parvati. Easy. Delusional is actually the word, not easy, delusional. He then decides he wants Jerry to be on the jury as a guaranteed vote for himself, and at Tribal Council, Sandra exposes Russell in front of the jury by saying, this dude constantly tells her that she isn't going to beat him at the end, and that she's worthless, and he doesn't deny it. So they all go to vote, and... First vote, Parvati. 
Jerry. Jerry. 17th person voted out and the ninth and final member of our jury. Jerry. Jerry. Chop spoke. Like what we saw of JT so long ago, Jerry likes Russell's gameplay, so he might have two votes at the end if he plays his cards right. He also got two votes on Samoa. Quite perfect. We then get a confessional from him where he says reaching the end twice in back to back seasons makes him want to tear up. And hey, I almost feel for him. But then he says Sandra hasn't done anything and is easy to beat, so then she takes revenge. I'm gonna burn his hat. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna tell? Uh-uh. Are you kidding? That's how much game I got. <laughs> Russell is obnoxious. So I took his hat and I threw it in the fire. I don't care. He could take his bald headed tail to tribal council. It'll be all right. He could wear his buff on his head. He has a big bald patch right here. He doesn't want nobody to know about. But we've been here for 39 days. I've seen it a whole ton of time. No, I don't think it's about the money tonight. I think it's about the title of Soul Survivor. That's all Russell wants. And if that's what Russell wants, that's what I got to make sure Russell does not get. Without even knowing it, Sandra created a perfect circle back to what Russell did to his own tribe in episode one of Samoa. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Final Tribal Council. We have nine jurors and maybe two will vote for Russell. Does that sound familiar? He starts off by giving his opening speech on why you should vote for him and... Everybody thinks that this game is a game of luck. Some cases I believe it is. In my case, I don't believe it is. I played as hard as I possibly could play and for some reason, you know, when I come here, I feel that people look at me like I did something wrong. You know, I tried to play hard. That's what I did. If I did anything to offend anybody in this game, I apologize, but I played the game. That's all I can say. Terrible, absolutely terrible. Half apologies and a lack of humility are not going to win this jury over. Colby is the first juror to address Russell and... Russell, did you really just say there wasn't any luck involved in getting yeah. you here? I do, I do believe that I got here without any luck. I believe I got here with my strategic play. Okay, well that, I was just double checking because you are delusional if you think you can make it all the way to the end of this game without any luck. Mind you, Colby once finished in second and he knows you need luck to get to the end in Survivor. He's been there. Coach is the second juror and he calls Russell a little man whose lack of admitting to how he really played this game is not going to win any votes. Amanda is the third juror and like Russell, she has reached the end twice and lost. She knows how this game works. She doesn't even talk to Russell at all, which kind of lines up with them never having a relationship that we saw on screen. Courtney is the fourth juror, another second place finisher, who praises Parvati and Sandra and straight up ignores Russell. JT is the fifth juror and the only former winner on the jury. So when he talks to Russell. Russell, I guess I'll talk to you first, old buddy. Good strategy is getting to the end of the game and then winning the game. Getting to the end of the game is half of it. People you voted out, do you think you've done well at preserving their vote for yourself at the end of the game? I really seriously believe that everybody on the jury is going to respect my gameplay, especially this group of people that's played the game before and knows how hard it is to play the game. And I might not get anybody's vote, but I have to stick to what's going to get me here. And then hopefully the jury will respect the way I played the game. Russell, I shook your hand before I left that night. I'm not out for vengeance, that's what so let's I, be clear I'm, That's on that. what I'm hoping for. No matter what happens today, I sit here and everybody looks at me like, like I'm the devil. You know, I'm, I am playing a game and I'm playing hey, I'm hard. laying in my bed, partner, laying but, yours. You know, but I want to I want to lay in your bed to, like I'm laying in mine. Yeah, but what I, I wanna, what I want to do is, you know, Are you through be cool afterwards. Thank, Thank you. you. I agree with JT. Just own your game. I'm not even sure Russell will get JT's vote now. Danielle is the sixth juror, another second place finisher, and she says, Russell, the way you've treated us, the jury is horrendous. Now, if you were to go back and play this game again, would you do anything different? And he says no, and he doesn't apologize. Jerry is the seventh juror, Russell's one seemingly locked vote. And right after you win the immunity necklace, the plan was get rid of poverty and take me to the end. So carry on from that moment. And right after I won the immunity necklace, that was the plan. And uh, all day I thought about it and I thought that it would be a bad strategic move by me to take you. 
because you didn't do anything to anybody in the jury. And if you were sitting next to me, in my mind, you would have won. Uh, can I tell you what he told me? And yeah, I was just going to say, Harvey, <laughs> your story, because we never talked. So the reason that he told me that you were leaving is because 100% he knew he was getting your vote. He wanted you on the jury. 100%. He knows he's getting your vote tonight. And it makes it, sense. You know what they say about assuming? makes an ass out of you and me. Exactly. Wow. Parvati exposed him good. Russell is still lying and that is not something Jerry has ever been okay with that we've seen. Candace is the eighth juror and she says, Russell, you didn't just lie. You told dirty lies, lies you didn't need to tell. You volunteered things and alliances you didn't need to just to make us feel like crap at the end. Rupert is the final juror and he says, Russell, your gameplay will not be rewarded by this jury because no one respects how you got to the end. You took the easy road by just burning everyone at every chance you could. So we go to the live reunion where Jeff reads the votes and first vote, Parvati, Sandra, <laughs> Parvati, two votes, Parvati, Sandra, we are tied again, two votes, Parvati, two votes, Sandra, Parvati, that's three votes, Parvati, we're tied again, Sandra, Sandra. The winner of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains, Sandra. So let's break this down. How was Russell Hance as a character? I'm not going to belabor the point. He was incredibly entertaining, but wow, he really went full bully on everyone in the second half of the season, which hits different than it did in Samoa since. He was seemingly constantly in power here. Like he was down in numbers at the beginning, but it was of his own doing. Again, fighting back when you're the underdog is fun, but yeah, the whole second half of the season, he was just bullying and he was doing it from the top and it's just a bad look. Russell was great TV this season, but he's a worse version of what we saw in Samoa. And I wonder if the lack of recovery time from his prior season is why. Out of 65 character moments shown on the show, 12 were anti-heroic and 53 were villainous making Russell Hance a villain character on Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. Now, how is Russell Hance as a strategist? At times, he was great. I mean, he flipped Tyson in a crucial moment, he flipped Jerry, and he flipped Candace, and he found two idols. These were all huge, crucial moves he needed to make to get to the end, but somehow his jury management was even worse than before. He would take one step forward and then two steps back, which baffles to no end. I think this is why no one really targeted him in the second half besides Sandra, because he was kind of a goat just to be dragged to the end for poverty to beat, and he played like it. And don't worry, like in Samoa, he still doesn't get why he lost after this either, but I'm going to save that for his eventual rise, fall, and destruction video. Out of 88 strategic moments shown on the show, 39 were smart and 49 were dumb, making Russell Hance a dumb strategist on Survivor, Heroes vs. Villains. Thanks for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.